Kia ora tātou. Um, my name is Hedia. I'm the Kai Whakahaere or CEO for Whare Hauora, um, but that pretty much just means I'm a product owner. <laughs> um, so for my day job, I work for Westpac um, as a product owner for the API squad. Uh, and that might sound impressive, but it just means my team is, not necessarily me. <laughs> Um, and so when Brenda gave me a text today saying, can you please do this presentation? I went, sure, but it'll be most likely to be about the why, not so much about the how, because I don't get it. <laughs> so um, when we talk about Whare Hauora, it's a registered tra charity, and each of us have our own stories as to how we came to Whare Hauora and why we want to be involved in it. So I'm going to tell you mine. This is Tawai Terangi. She's the 83-year-old matriarch of Te Rangi Kaiamokura Whānau. She is my grandmother, and she has raised me since I was 11 years old. Unfortunately, around six months ago, we, well, we used to live in a house in Ascot Park in Porirua, a state housing home. It was a large home, five bedrooms, and considering how big most Māori families get, we really needed the space. But the thing about that house is that it's uninsulated. And about six months ago, my nanny died from pneumonia. We knew that she was sick. We knew that she had a cold. But three, three weeks after we knew that she had a cold, we had taken her to the doctors, we had gotten her medication. Three weeks later, she was in the hospital and the doctors were telling us that this was an end of life event. How did it happen so fast, we asked ourselves. It's not like we just left her there. So after the tangi, when we had buried my grandmother and we were back at the home to pack everything up, I measured that room. This was the room that I grew up in because we used to share a bed with my old grandmother. So the Google, Google weather map told me that for the period of August, uh, for the week from the 11th to the 16th, the, the temperature outside was around 16 degrees. Sorry, yeah, 16 degrees. The temperature inside, however, was only about 18 degrees. The thing about that is that the World Health Organization recommendation for healthy homes states that elderly and children should be in rooms that are 20 to 21 degrees. So effectively, we think that the house that my grandmother was living in for 35 years was making her sick to the point of death. We know that a third of New Zealand homes are cold and damp. Philippa Chapman, Howden Chapman, did a, a study on the effects of housing versus res respiratory illness. Um, it, she's quoted in the housing bill, the New Zealand housing um, policy research as well as the asthma research. She's just uh, the person that people go to when they want to talk about respiratory illness and the effects it has on people. <laughs> One in six people in New Zealand have a respiratory illness. That's 700,000 people. Uh, that's also $5.5 billion in health. That was the 2016 statistics. And it's the third leading cause of death in Aotearoa. This isn't a small thing. So what are we doing about it? So Brenda was the person that came up with the initial idea that we should measure in order to understand the living environments that Kiwis are in, we need to know what they are. Because at the moment, everyone just guesses. They know the wardrobe that has damp and mould in it. They know that if they pull out their bed underneath it, on the wall, will be black mould. They know which room to pull their kids out of and make them sleep in the lounge because they know that in winter time, their babies will get cold if they sleep in there. So she created Fuddy Senses. This is our loving <laughs> spray painted green <laughs> 3D printed case. <laughs> Fuddy Senses measure temperature and humidity in each room. Our goal is to teach communities how to create sensors themselves, how to install those sensors in each room of their home, 
how to create the gateway so that we can do, uh, so that we can measure and pull the data from those sensors, push it to the cloud, and then display. Measure, make transparent. These are the new designs. If you have a look at our current one, it looks pretty cra crappy, but the data is good, because that's all we need really. So we're currently working with Otago University because we know that we can measure it, we can make it transparent, but if we're going to try and look at insights and next steps, we really need some help because we're not scientists and this is not our area of expertise. So when we take that data, we will allow the residents of the home to be able to see the data of the rooms in their home and it will do a push every 30 seconds. So it's as close to real time as we can get. And then we will aggregate that data and compare it against the profile for that room. So when you install your sensor, you'll go, oh, this is Katie's room, she's a, she's a child. Or this is Matt's room, he's my elderly grandfather. And so we will have different temperatures for those types of rooms in comparison to adults, healthy adults. And that will, is what will will give us a rating because we need to compare the actual what's actually happening in the room against those profiles in order to give next best steps for the resident. At current pricing, we can do a fire sensor kit at $120 if there are four bedrooms in the house. Uh, and that's based on an Auckland manufacturer building the sensors for us. And it's the most simplest design you could possibly think of. The kids um, at uh, Strathmore, one of the Strathmore schools, build these. It's that simple, but it's hard work because I burn myself all the time trying to solder things. So that's one pretty assembled. Assembled. So if respiratory illness costs us $5.5 billion a year, and a fire sensor kit costs $120, why, why can't we fund them like we do flu shots? Or why can't they be included in rates? Why can't body sensors be just so normal that you get them for free? Seven months. Not yet. Well, since the since the change in government, because the previous one didn't really like us. <laughs> um, but what we wanted to do was prove ourselves first. So what's happened is that um, last year, about ooh, four months ago, we applied for funding for from the Kahau Fund. That's Tepuni Kokiri and MB, and they gave us one hundred and forty thousand dollars. And that money is essentially because we had already done the basic prototypes, but we could only do eight houses because it's us doing this part time. Um, but what we're going to do with that money is buy our software development team <laughs> so that we can get notifications out because it's notifications that are going to make the next steps for our residents because a lot of our low socioeconomic homes they have low reading ages. They don't necessarily have access to computers. They might have a cell phone, but we want them to be able to install it and then just get a notification on what is happening in that room and the next best steps. And that notification will be triggered by a health event or what we would term as um, someone being getting sick from being in that room. So that's what we're going to use the money to pay for. Uh, as well as scaling out. So currently, we sent the designs that we have at the moment in the repos to uh, electronic partners, partners uh, to go over them because we need to be robust. We need to make sure that the parts that we use are going to be around for a long time. And that costs money, so we'll pay for that too. But then also, we need to roll this out. So for this year, we're going to target three suburbs to um, coordinate with community centres um, and marae to be able to bring in, say, 10 families, and we will teach them how to create their own sensors. Uh, we have a design where it's just screw things together. 
what we want to teach them is the parts that are in the sensors, that there is not anything in there untoward, like a microphone or a camera. We want to teach them that they can pull out a piece and put it in themselves for maintenance and support of them, their own um, network. Uh, and we also want to teach them how they can get their own internet connection uh, from the Spark Jumpstart for $10 a month and they'll get 30 gigs a month. So it is that kind of bundling and support of our families so that we can roll this out in a long, for a long-term relationship. Um, and we will also be doing a Pledge Me campaign so that regular schmegler middle-class families can buy their own Fari Sensor kits and it will be the high-end type so that they will buy one and gift one because we need a more sustainable way of rolling out to our people because 140K isn't going to go very far. It will give us our prototypes, our software, our scalability and our quality and then we'll be able to prove to government that they need to fund us but we also need to show that the people want it. That's our push. Uh, we want policy change really badly because it doesn't seem to matter how new your home is or how rich you are. It's all down to the building compliance codes and not every house, less than a third at the moment, have insulation. And truth be told, because we can't measure those homes, we don't know if insulation is actually making a difference to respiratory illness. So that's our why. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I've just put the GitHub repos up here. Yeah, so we wanted to be able to give a dash, but there's a reason why it's not the first thing that we're getting built, right? Because it's the notifications that will make, uh, will allow our residents to make better choices. But we know that the collective data, uh, the history of it, not just the right now, is actually what will make significant change in people's lives. Because if you start to compare someone's uh, health records, against their home records, then you'll be able to get an understanding of, okay, why is it that I got a cold then? Oh, right, the room I was in, it was in under 18 degrees. And it's been like that for a long period of time. Oh, wait, last week, winter, <laughs> Carlo um, was sick. Does that mean that this winter, if it gets to 18 degrees, um, I'm going to get, he's going to get sick again? It's that whole insights and trends. But funny you should talk about the data because we are for the resident. So that means that even if someone approached us with much, much money, we would say no. <laughs> um, and uh, the way that we've structured our dashboard is that there are no addresses. There are no personal details in there. So if we get hacked, it's okay. You can know if my, fr my kitchen is seven degrees, perfectly fine. But which kitchen, where? Um, because we do know that you can find out if someone is home or not based on their data. Um, and, but in saying that also, uh, because uh, Brenda is also a very big open data proponent, uh, we will be aggregating and releasing based on suburbs and we're going to try for uh, sensor blocks or mesh blocks. We're currently talking to Stats New Zealand because they have a better way, they tell us, and we'd love to implement that. Um, so that we will aggregate, it has to be more than 10 homes has the, the system installed and then we will aggregate and release. So, yeah, because yeah, like one of the reasons why you want that aggregated data is for lobbying, right? For yeah. Help us make these homes more safe. Here's tangible evidence that the homes are unsafe. Mm. 
so the, it's just members of the project who have these devices right now? Or? Uh, well, we're uh, spread out. There's about eight points. Uh, Rabbit Tech have a set. Um, they have the worst set with no cases. They do look like fire traps, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's about eight to ten, and we're currently testing our new gateway design, but we're running in parallel with our electronics partner too, because the stuff that comes out of the electronics partner will most likely be the one that we sell. Um, but we will also open source that too. So I guess I guess my question was related, which was there would there would be some kind of release that people would sign about allowing their data to be aggregated. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, so when we have the noho we because um, we haven't gone through the process yet of how we would onboard online, um, because we're going to prototype it out during the noho or the community outreach, uh, where we would talk them, to them about their data, about their privacy, um, and then say, we don't actually hold your personal details, but in order for us to figure out the mesh block or the suburb, we need, we need those at least. Anything else? In terms of funding, have you considered a, a, a buy one, get one sorry. Yeah, um, and because uh, that was one of the best ways that we could think of that was giving back to the people while <coughs> providing value to um, the middle class while still raising our profile enough that maybe government would say, hey, here's some money, no strings attached. <laughs> Yeah, because that's another problem that we have is uh, New Zealand pricing is, of course, much more expensive than Chinese. Uh, but we want to try to make it as New Zealand made as possible. Sorry. <laughs> you, you mentioned um, wanting people to want this. What sort of response have you had from, from people who have talked to you about the price of the group and involved in this process? Um, lots and lots of, wow, of course. Um, if we are living in uh, environments that are below World Health Organization recommendations, we're going to get sick. But of course, and everyone not, has that anecdotal story, right? Um, and, but being able to prove it is something else entirely. So we've had lots of people wanting to buy it now, but of course we must test and we must um, get ready first. Yep, sorry, I'll um, put that up. On, it's a, we use a waffle board. <laughs> yep, waffle. Waffle.io. Um, but we're actually trying to move it over to Asana. So what I'll do is update the GitHub and um, push that out too. The actual. Already requested that we give them um, personal data, um, and it's another thing that we have to work into when we actually start to do the onboarding process, because what we're afraid of is that people won't know what they're giving away, and so there is a lot of teach in this or coach, um, but we also know how how handy or how um, because Housing New Zealand also want to partner, but they also want access to personal data, and. Uh, we're trying to just steer them away from having to know who, what, when, where, and just looking at their actual houses themselves, um, plus allowing the resident to say yes or no. But we also want them to, we want our residents to be able to make money from their own data, which is that, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the th work through things that we have to go through. Because at the moment we're using a PW Oh, actually. Because we can still have a cell phone number or an email address without being able to give up away the actual physical address. You can, you can use the, the database, you can use numbers, and have a local database yeah. that can index those numbers. 
Yeah, we could. It's just because we feel that in the future we might get hit with some legal complications. For instance, if I was a land uh, a landlord, uh, someone had installed whare hauora sensors into my home. It was proven that the home was uh, making the resident sick. Um, but you don't know which, and a court case was brought against you, or you were charged with something, or you got yourself into trouble, so much so that you weren't allowed to rent that house anymore. So that's the main reason, because we don't know. So we just cut it out entirely um, until we can figure out a better way. But we will have to use an email address or a cell phone number. No, well, we're afraid of the repercussions of the on the resident from landlords because it's hard enough to get a rental property at the moment. So, if, for example, they could just board a heater. Yeah. If, if a landlord is happy to rent you a damp home, they mm. might not be happy with you measuring the, damp the dampness. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But if you have measured data, that's something else. Have you considered uh, some very simple alerting on the device itself in the house? Mm. Can you just blink uh, when there is an alert on the website? Yes. Um, we have, um, well, because, you know, we did it in iterations when we came up with the designs, and we do have a design that does um, just a simple, we did actually have the, a screen with the temperature and humidity on it, but then I think that uh, an indicator we found was better because our people couldn't read what was best for them, if you know what I mean. If you don't remember what the World Health Organization recommendations are, then how will you know if that room is healthy for you or not? Yeah, we could totally do that. Uh, and there's no reason why we can't. Hmm. Um, I'll put a notion and try and figure that one out. Thank you, Lord. Do you want to work with other community groups that could help with the assembly and distribution in the local community? Yes, that would be fantastic because, well, we feel that that is a better way to build a community. Um, and when we do do Noho Marae, it won't be just us. We'll be pulling in, um, like, Jump, I mean, Spark Jumpstart, as well as um, tertiary education providers to see if people actually like the idea of getting into software or hardware. Um, and, you know, having people there that they know from the community already building stuff and saying, hey, yeah, I'd like to try that too, would make a heck of a lot of difference. Yeah, at the moment, I can't remember which school. Yeah, because yeah, cause we uh, and when we did the initial prototypes, we just imported all of the parts from AliExpress. <laughs> but of course, we had to do large loads of them because we had to test each co component first um, and separate all the dud ones, and then you know keep going like that as we built. Um, and the 120 is a complete sensor, um, and. For some, especially for komatua or elderly with arthritis or people that can't put it together themselves, we would rather just give them a set. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, but I get your point. Totally. Yeah. To do it. Yeah, because libraries also want to get um, hold of this. At the moment, we haven't tested the, the lifetime of the sensor, but that will probably come out of the electronic partners um, testing. But at the moment, because we're battery, we go by battery, and at the moment, we're about eight months um, batteries will last for. So 
Yeah, and that's why we're um, going with a Spark Jumpstart as well, to give them, not free, but $10 for 30 gigs a month is good. Yeah, we found that the parts that needed to install into the sensors in order for us to reuse it would actually be about 30 bucks. Yeah, sorry. Um, so software development would be great, um, just trying to, because we have a deadline, a hard deadline of May to do our first rollout to um, Strathmore, our first 10 families, um, and it's okay if we look crappy in some parts, but they should be able to read it, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, and uh, we, uh, we currently redid the PCBs, so the current designs that are up there are out of date, so we have to update those before we can um, ask people if they would like to test out our designs. Yeah, so our, uh, from our commercial point of view, we've got the community side, right, where we're teaching people. We've got the electronics partners that are uh, doing the designs for commercial. And then we're going to roll out to uh, retail so that people can just waltz into the warehouse, hopefully, and uh, buy a set. As well as, but our first port of call is actually commercial, truly commercial. Like, um, uh, so there is a... Uh, when you buy large amounts of property, um, so property protection, that's what it's called. Uh, so I've bought three warehouses, but I've noticed that they're degrading over time quite fast. I want to know why they are, and I want to know um, if someone is actually, you know, making sure that they're uh, dried out as well as um, not rotting effectively, especially in Wellington climates. Um, so that service we haven't quite thought through yet, but we know that there are at least two transfers that we can go for so that we aren't reliant on someone else's funding. Sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, sorry. that but we couldn't find figure out how to differentiate between air and wall if you know what I mean yeah. but we could figure out the dew point yeah. and thereby giving us a condensation point if you know what I mean um, yeah okay I'm going to sit down right. thank you thank you very much